Our next guest is uh, someone I would say would be best described as uh, worldly and also has some life experiences or life's experiences that would uh, most people would stand back and say just wow because he has worked in law enforcement. He's, uh, he's been an athletic coach. Uh, he has a radio background, he hosts a radio show of his own, we should point out, in uh, neighboring Washington State. And he's a Christian pastor. And he's done all of this in a life after moving to the United States when he was a little boy and has lived in Canada and the U.S. ever since. After his family uh, fled Iran, after that country was taken over uh, by uh, radical Islamists, and his family then settled here in North America. He's joined us before on the program before, and when he was here in the Twin Falls area just a few few weeks back, several weeks ago, he attracted uh, crowds <laughs> Probably when you total them up in two churches alone, more than 600 people came out to hear his remarks. Uh, we want to welcome back to Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, Pastor Sharam Hadi. And first of all, uh, glad to have you with us. Bill, so glad to be back with you. Thank you for inviting me on the show again. Right off the top, uh, for people who, 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 who are aware of this, you have a radio show of your own. But if people would like to actually hear you on the radio, when and where can they do that? Well, uh, most of our coverage is on the East Coast and Central part of the United States uh, on uh, American Family Radio. Uh, so if they're not in those areas, uh, if they go online, uh, American Family Radio, um, we our show airs at uh, 10 o'clock Pacific, 12 o'clock noon uh, on Saturdays, so they can listen online uh, from the AFR link um, there. But if they also wanted to listen to pod, uh, to uh, archives, they can go to our website at uh, TIL Project, that stands for Truth in Love, project.com, TIL Project.com, under our media tab, and then we archive the shows there very rapidly um, after they air on Saturdays, and that uh, they can also follow there. But the, the um, I'm not quite sure what the coverage is on the West Coast. I know there's one station in um, Washington State that we get it live here, but most of the stations are on the East Coast. I was going to say, it's nice to have a national reach, though. It, it, it is, absolutely. It's been a tremendous blessing, and um, it gives us a platform, because obviously uh, with the issues that are going on today, things are changing so quickly and rapidly, and uh, obviously the, the, the radio platform allows us to, to address uh, issues. Pre- predominantly, we, fo- we, you know, we focus on the Islam issue uh, from a aspect of apologetics towards uh, the Christian faith from the aspect of uh, uh, polemics and, and, and dealing with what Islam really is. So we, we want to communicate, uh, uh, you know, obviously a, a, a heart of, of rescuing uh, Muslims from the darkness of Islam as I was rescued uh, 16 years ago, uh, but by the grace of God, being able to be brought out of, of this ideology and brought into the Christian faith uh, and converting then. But so that's a, a lot of what we focus the show on. Uh, sometimes we do cover other things uh, uh, that are going on in the nation as well. For many people in this country, and of course I can remember all the way back when I was a child and you know reading about airplane hijackings in the early 1970s, and, and, and it was the first my first experience with this, but I don't think that most of us really ever gave it much thought until 14 years ago today. So here on this anniversary of that terrible event, it really was a wake-up call for a great many people, and I think about the fact that it hasn't gone away. I mean, it's still on the public consciousness because the crowds that you attracted when you were here in Filer and then at the uh, the, the Baptist Church uh, here as well in Twin Falls really spoke to the uh, to the public interest in this. A- and I think that by coming back here, you're, you're going to be doing some programs as well again in the area that that somehow we're reaching people, even if we aren't reaching the elites. But at some point, if we reach enough people just among the, the rank and file, we will get the attention of the people at the top. Do you feel the same way? Well, I certainly pray that. I, uh, I, I was very, very encouraged and blessed by the turnout uh, when I was there a few weeks ago, as you mentioned, and I do believe that uh, there is an awakening, as you said, among a remnant, among among uh, uh, the, the, the core constituency that we need to be able to reach uh, who I think are waking up to the things that are going on, and I think particularly realizing that uh, what they are hearing from the elite, from the media, from the government, um, is now uh, what I believe to be on a level of propaganda, that it's not uh, 
uh, it's not ignorance, it's intentional lying, it's intentional deception. And therefore, as people do wake up to that, they're very hungry for the truth, and that's why our ministry is focusing on speaking the truth in love, because, uh, you know, we're not hearing the truth uh, on, on many fronts, um, and uh, that awakening hopefully can lead to uh, a, a turning, although uh, we are sure in trouble in our nation uh, with, with, with where we have come, how we have rejected our Judeo-Christian foundation, how we've rejected God, um, and, and yet uh, it seems like the elite, the media, our education system, our government seems to want to promote the God of Islam, and yet, we, you know, we can't, you know, we're, uh, um, if, if a Christian stands for their values, uh, they, they potentially could go to jail now, but, but you know, we, 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 we're promoting left and right um, other gods, and, and particularly Islam in this nation. So, uh, I think Twin Falls area was a perfect example of how when a community wakes up um, and, and, and can rise up, there, there may be a, a you know, real hope to be able to turn things around, at least, at least at a local level. I'm not quite sure how we can impact it nationally, but at least at a local area level, I think there's definitely still hope to do that. In fact, I was uh, reading this morning at the Daily Beast about the, the 50 intelligence officers who say that the, uh, the evidence they were collecting on ISIS uh, the reports were rewritten to make it look like it was less of a threat. Up until now, I would have said, well, maybe we have a lot of people who just don't. They're wearing rose-colored glasses in government and in media, and they just don't see what's going on. But I think when you say propaganda, I think this clearly proves there's an effort to uh, obfuscate, I guess is the big word you would use in that, but at least to, uh, to make it obscure uh, what's actually taking place, and that should frighten all of us. It, it absolutely should, because... Uh, we obviously are entrusting to some extent uh, our elected officials with, with with our security, with our safety. Uh, which, which by the way, Bill, on on the obviously on the refugee situation, that is a big issue um, in in the Twin Falls area, and and now I, I think it's a growing issue across the nation. That's one of the number one concerns: is that look, we're not getting accurate information by those who are saying um, trust us. You know, a lot of what you hear on the refugee front is trust us. Um, we vetted these people. We we know who's coming in. Don't worry, everything is good. And you're going, wait a second. We want to see the facts. We want to see the evidence. We want to see, and especially when you have those in law enforcement who are telling you, uh, look, a lot of the information has been purged. I mean, we can show you directly if you go to the 9/11 Commission after 9/11, being that today is the anniversary. Uh, you look at the the references of the 9/11 Commission made to. Uh, the influence of Islam on the not only on the hijackers but on the whole mentality of the um, Islamist supremacy movement. Uh, they had hundreds of references. Well, in 2009, when you look at uh, the uh, Homeland Security memos that were coming out after Obama took took office, and I'm not saying that this there wasn't some of this pre-Obama, but certainly with this ad- administration. Those terms were all purged. I mean, they were systematically purged. They, they allowed, this administration allowed uh, the front groups for the Muslim Brotherhood, CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations, ISNA, the Islamic Society of North America, they allowed them access to, to, to classified training materials that were being used for uh, Department of, of, of Defense, uh, FBI, um, even within uh, Homeland. Uh, they were purged, so you don't you don't even see the term Islam anymore. And these are the individuals who are telling us that we're supposed to be good, uh, whereas we now have you know some members within the FBI, some members within the intelligence community saying, "Listen, uh, there is no vetting process. There, there, we, we are we are completely turned uh, you know inside out with our national security, with our uh, you know actual vetting process." And that's what would concern me is, you know, and goes back to your, your, your comment, is this an accident or is this intentional um, deception, intentional purging, intentional propaganda? And in, in my book, I believe it is absolutely intentional in order to uh, completely undermine this nation. And that's uh, what I'm praying will be, will be a wake-up call to, to some, particularly within our elected officials, our communities, and even in the law enforcement community itself. Our guest is Pastor Sharon Haiti, and he's joining us this morning 
uh, on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com and Top Story with Bill Colley. We've got a couple of minutes before we have a break coming up, and you can stay with us a few minutes after the break, right, uh, through another segment? Yes, not a problem, absolutely. I just wanted to ensure that uh, because I've got a couple of other things, too, we could we could address. Uh, I think that for a lot of people who, who uh, have been struggling with this, they, they think they, they want to do the right thing, um, and, and they feel pressured. Uh, this morning there's a newspaper story here locally about the newspapers promoting its own forum where they're going to try to answer the public's uh, questions. I think people are feeling pressured by neighbors and the elites, and, and, and they're worried that someone's going to call them out and saying, you know, you're not being a, 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 a good Christian or just not a good human being uh, by not allowing these people in. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I, I, Bill, I'm feeling the same thing. Um, I just had recently a um, um, some folks that I know, you know, uh, on Facebook or wherever, posting about how um, if we don't allow all these refugees into our country, um, we're not demonstrating true Christian compassion. We're not being uh, even scriptural. And, and as a pastor, I responded back to them and I said, uh, you know, first and foremost, what the Bible describes is that when you have uh, foreigners among you. Uh, you are to treat them with respect, meaning that if, if they're being uh, law-abiding and, and, and they're doing the right thing, we treat them with respect. We don't, we don't want to blanket hate uh, all individuals or, or, or any particular group of individuals. Uh, that's why I will say in my presentations, look, we're not trying to hate Muslims. We're, we're trying to expose what Islam is and what the ideology and, and the teachings are uh, so people can understand. Um, but but what I would say to those people who are being pressured, as I, as I am, to be able to go along with the program, is that there is a legitimate responsibility uh, to, to shepherd our community, to, she- to, to be able to um, have the welfare of our community in mind. And to think that, number one, uh, by the way, I am fully in favor of asylum in, in the idea of truly being a thing of... of, of uh, uh, a place of refuge, that if somebody truly is, is is being persecuted and in need of help to come, but the idea you open the floodgates and you allow everybody in, and then most of those people coming in are Muslims who have an agenda, that's where we have to get past the emotional dialogue. And, well, uh, being called names, being made to feel bad, and get to the facts and the truth. And the reality is, is that there is a legitimate concern about uh, refugees who are coming in, who are not being vetted, who are getting carte blanche, by the way, um, um, uh, w- welfare benefits. Uh, and I'm not sure if I mentioned when I, when I was there last time in my presentation, but we just got some information from the INS. I'm not sure how close we are to the break, but I wanted to share some of that information. We've got about 20 seconds. We, we can, we can yes. hold that until the other side? You got it, absolutely. This is going to shock your listeners when it comes to the welfare and the benefits that these refugees are, are being guaranteed that you and I would never get. <laughs> so uh, it, it, there's legitimate concerns. It is All not right. just an emotional argument, but we'll that's touch, the pressure. We'll touch on that in a minute. Pastor Sharam Hadi and joining us. Our guest is expected to return to the Magic Valley and the Twin Falls uh, area coming up in just a few weeks. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, of course. But he has been here before, and, and he's really, call it a clarion call, if you will, uh, he's been sounding an, uh, an alarm about some of the dangers we face. Uh, and as he was pointing out in the last segment of the program, Christians are going to jail now for their beliefs. On the other hand, uh, we're seeing the beliefs of Muslims promoted in this country, and you've got to ask yourself which one poses a greater danger to the uh, to social order. It's 923. Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 57. Our guest is Pastor Sharam Hadi, and, and you were telling us just before the break you had a couple of points you wanted to make. Uh, we've got a few minutes now. Uh, go right ahead. Well, I uh, was able to do some uh, training last time. Actually, I was in um, Idaho uh, with some law enforcement, and I had an individual that, that um, has asked to remain uh, you know, unnamed, but they were within the INS, uh, within Immigration Naturalization Services, and they process refugees coming in. This is this is an individual that is on the front lines uh, and he told me several things. One, that they are that there's a tremendous pressure from top down for them to process refugees very quickly with very little oversight because they just gotta, you know, kind of hurt him through. Uh, but the other the things that he said to me that were staggering is one, 
uh, a lot of the ones that are coming in now, particularly from the Muslim countries, from North Africa, from Iraq, from Syria, he said they have no information on them, so therefore they're having to give them new birth dates, new last names. Uh, he says a lot of times you'll see, you know, uh, 0101 uh, on their on their applications because uh, they don't even know when their birth date is. They don't, they don't have last names. So uh, these are the individuals that are coming in. So literally there is no vetting process because there is no information process. So what he is telling me on the ground is matching exactly what the concerns of the FBI have been, which is, look, we can't even, we are tasked once, and, and this is what he was saying to me, Bill, they're not vetted before they get here. They're vetted once they're here. So the idea is come here, then the FBI is supposed to track, you know, follow them, track them. Meanwhile, they're walking around in our communities uh, not knowing who the individuals are. Then it gets worse. He told me once they come in, they are put uh, right in the front of the line for citizenship. There, there's no process of becoming a resident, having to be a resident for a period of time. They're immediately put into the citizenship line. And if within the first seven years, first of all, they're guaranteed seven years of benefits, seven years uh, of, of all the free things that, that the government is getting. Now, don't forget, and I know you know this, but maybe the listeners don't know that the government already was paying the sponsoring agencies, uh, these so-called Christian charities, to uh, giving them tremendous amounts of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to, 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 you know, bring them in as a sponsoring agency. Then we're paying welfare, housing, education, all the free stuff that they get for seven years. Now, here's the shocking part. Well, if that's not bad enough, he said, if within seven years they become citizens, and they actually follow through that process and become citizens, which is that's when they're finally vetted better. That's when they're finally given given their medical background screening. Can you believe that? They're here this whole time, and he was telling me they're not properly even medically screened. Then he said if they become citizens within the first seven years, they are guaranteed access to lifetime benefits. Lifetime benefits. I almost fell over when he said this. I had to ask him three times. Are you telling me that they can then stay on welfare, housing, uh, all the stuff if they want to? He said, absolutely, they're guaranteed lifetime benefits. And so, you know, is, is this what, what we've become? Is that this is compassion? This is the Christian thing to do to be able to... I thought the Christian thing to do was to teach someone how to fish so they can fish for themselves, live for themselves, become productive members of society, not to become a welfare state, uh, so we have national security issues, we have medical issues, and we have the financial concerns. And I'm being told, well, you're not being compassionate. No, as I said before the break, I have compassion for a person who's truly persecuted and who would be able to have an opportunity. My question is, where are these so-called Christians who are giving me a hard time? Where is their compassion for the Christians who are being persecuted and not being allowed in the country? We have those Christians that have been sitting down at the Mexican border uh, of the Chaldean Iraqi Christians for months now, not being allowed into the country. The Obama administration is saying, well, maybe next year we'll look at that. This is nonsense. This is, not, this is hypocrisy at the highest level. And that's what I'm saying to these Christians who want to make me feel bad. Where is your compassion for your brother and sister in Christ who's being uh, persecuted, hunted down, murdered, beheaded, burned, whatever, over there, and they're not being allowed into the country. The true asylum, the true refugee seeker, and yet we're opening the floodgates. And, Bill, I will, I've said it in my presentations, I'll say it publicly again here, this is an agenda of this administration of the United Nations. Uh, please don't forget that the largest voting bloc in the United Nations is the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. 56 Muslim countries plus Palestine, they are pulling the strings this is an intentional wave, just like in Europe, to flood the system because they're, they're using refugees to be able to flip the nation upside down. It is the fastest way to turn the country upside down um, because they don't have time to wait to do it you know, uh, through their other means, uh, which is going on at the same time. Well, Pastor, so I hope that makes Yeah. Uh, just quickly, uh, we've got about 20 seconds. Uh, your website again, so people can take a look at that. Yeah, it's uh, uh, TILproject.com, uh, letter T-I-L for truth and love, project.com. 
Um, also, on our events page, there's information about where we're going to be speaking uh, when we're back in uh, the Twin Falls area. We're going to be in Buell, we're going to be in Jerome, and we're going to be in Twin Falls three nights. Um, you know, we'd love to see people come out and, and uh, l- listen to what uh, hopefully the information we're going to share. Absolutely. Hey, thank you very much, and we wish you safe travels getting back here. Thank you, Bill. It was a blessing to be on the show with you. Thank you for having me. I look forward to seeing you uh, in person there. Thank you again. Pastor Sharam Haiti and joining us on air this morning. It's coming up on 930. And as he pointed out, he's going to be making several appearances in the area later this month. Those available at his website. We'll be talking about that, too, as well in the coming days. Don't worry. We've got more coming up, including your reaction. It's 59.